I was about to tell the Reverend we have a registration for the next corporate wedding. But this looked like it was headed there. <laughs> but then it took a different turn and reminded me of the days I was at university. And we could only afford one soda for two people. So you'd always make sure yours and hers is a sprite. <laughs> yours is a sprite and hers is a sprite, but remember you can only afford one soda. So one of those bottles had to contain water. <laughs> that should be your bottle. <laughs> but as things become unfortunate, you can easily mix up the two. And when you just actually realize you have the right sprite. <laughs> so what is in hand? Have you ever woken up and found yourself dead? Mm -hmm. Anybody? That you woke up one morning and there you were dead. Or ever woken up and found that your greatest enemy is actually yourself. Not your neighbor, not anybody else out there. This morning, we want to talk to ourselves. The Reverend asked us to greet our neighbors, and I saw you do that. And I want to ask you to actually greet yourself. Take a moment and greet yourself. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, it is my prayer that this morning you help us such to see the person within ourselves and speak to them and let them speak to us by your grace and by your mercy. In the name of God we pray. Amen. Our reading in the epistle talked about quiet tombs that are clean outside but with bones right on the inside of them. We want to find out what is it that is on the inside of you. Are you alive? Are you dead? When you wake up in the morning, what goes on in your mind? We have in Revelations the church in service was alive and yet the Bible says dead. It's possible to be alive and dead at the same time. Spiritually dead, though physically. I was just driving in town yesterday. Uganda Road has two lanes. You can either drive on that side or drive on this side. But quite often you have a slow car on the other side, so you decide to cross to this side. And somebody just decided to cross on the side where I was. And if I had a duty, he possibly would be dead, not me, certainly. Doing all the baptisms and confirmations, 
giving good offertory and literally offering nice chicken to our guests. And for us, we eat fish of Sundays. But just for a better life, are you real to yourself? Little one that it took Jesus himself with all the seven spirits we have written that have been written about, which is a complete set of scripture and spiritual insight to conclude that the church in Sardis was broken. The church couldn't notice, the people couldn't notice, the preachers couldn't notice, and the priests and every other person in there, it took Jesus to notice that the church was there. And many times we ourselves in our physical lives, we are alive and possibly dead. It takes a medical doctor. And quite often with the support of a lab report to say, man, you need to be admitted. You can be walking. And then you just feel a little bit of pain, a little bit of distress, a little bit of discomfort. And you turn up at the doctor's place and the doctor checks your eyes, checks your pulse, and tells you, you know what? Right into the theater. You are a dying man. But that is the blessing, and that will be the best part of it. Very many people have not had that opportunity to receive that doctor's report. I'm very sure of all hard of cases where you wake up and you're celebrating with a friend only to be told a little while later that so and so is dead. What happened? We actually do not believe it. What happened? So we might be walking dead, physically fit, spiritually thinking we are okay. But the Bible asks us to search ourselves this morning. What is it that brings us to church every day? What do we consider to be church in the first place? Is it this beautiful building? Is it the congregation around us? What is it that we call church? So when you talk about the church in Zadis, are we talking about the place, the people, or the person? Do you know that a lot of evil that goes on around us actually begins within us and quite often remains within us? The things we battle with, the feelings that we have, the failures that we think we have, the anger that we carry every day, the worries, worried about almost everything. And statistically, 95% of the things we worry about never come to pass. But we continue to worry about them. Will I find money for fees? Will I find money for food? Will I find that if I fell sick, what would happen? Will I ever get married? Some of the corporate big wedding, we even had the balance. I think this is the first time in a long, long time I've had a wedding where there was Even the government budget of Uganda does not have balance. And then the president told us money is not my problem. <laughs> if money is not his problem, we actually have a problem. As a country, a serious, serious problem. Because 60% of our budget is going to be borrowed. Money is not. You must go through the same thing. Convincing yourself and for it might be true, actually, money is not a problem. You have it in sacks stacked up in the roof of your house. You have possibly seven vehicles packed up in your compound. You sleep in the house where you get the motorbike to move to the other side of it. When you sit for lunch, chicken, desserts, and I don't want to sit at the table, you have suits and shoes that even if you ever bother to put them on once a day, even within one year, you don't have finished them. 
happened with the male like Marcos, the wife of Marcos many years back, she had 3,000 pairs of shoes. Remember the year had 365 days. So even if it was a shoe in the morning, a shoe in the afternoon, it would take her another five years to go around the sets of shoes that she had. Money is not When I came to university many years back, I used to do economics on Monday and Thursday. And there was this lecturer who taught us, and she never, never put on a dress twice in the whole year. She would teach us on Monday and Thursday. And our semesters, our years were terms, so we start in October and till June. Different. Her wedding was the first I heard of at the Sheraton Hall. Today, many years later, they live separate with their husband. Are you alive but dead? Christ is saying, Arise and strengthen the little that is left alive in you before it is too late. Speaking to yourself, the church in service had their share. It's not about money. It's not about the blood that flows within you. It's about the everything that makes you a person. Simon Peter, that great disciple of Jesus Christ, had his own experience of spiritual death. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, Jesus spoke to him and said, Get behind me, Satan. Peter, the disciple, was alive spiritually. It was not even a devil in him. Peter had graduated to the level of being Satan himself. Are you Satan? Or are you just possessed by devils? Either way, arise and let the little that is still left in you be saved before it is too late. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Jesus again speaking to Peter said, I pray for you that your faith will not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. You're supposed to be here, but not to be here. And we need to turn back and strengthen one another. Even the mighty Samson, who thought he was still strong, having carried the city's gates down the valley. This for me is a scripture that speaks and harms me. People locked up the city's gate so that Samson would not go away. And you might lock it up. The city's gate is not like this gate of the child. These are gates entering into the city. Compare it with the main gate down there. And this is just a canvas gate. If it was a city gate, it would be much, much bigger and wider. They thought that they would hold Samson back. Samson gave them a difficult task. He actually carried the gate down the valley. Now the city had a problem of getting the gate back. Samson was that mighty. You might be one of the mightiest here. You go to first class or you are just about to get a first class in this university. Strong and strong as Samson. You possibly were the best employee, or you are with the best companies in town. You have the most beautiful wife. You even treat her to chicken from Javas. Your home is better than Javas. <laughs> the best car in town. You may be a good way the numbers are in this. You even trust the medical card you have. Anytime you fall sick, for you have a medical card that allows you IHK, like a cell, case medical center, mentioned bell cardiac. You have the best medical card. Remember, celebrities today are committing suicide. In the US. These are not our local celebrities here in Uganda. These are celebrities with millions of dollars. They are dead, though alive. So they just 
inside and so why don't I join in the day because after all, I don't feel like being alive. And you possibly share the same experience. You look through yourself and you don't seem to be alive. Life has told to you. Samson, when Delilah woke him up and said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought to himself, I will go out as before and shake myself free. This is Judges chapter 16, verse 20. The Bible says, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. The mighty man who carried the gate down was used as a spectacle to amuse the city. He removed his eyes. He had completely lost it because the Lord had left him. Are you in the same place with Jesus? Did you leave Jesus at all? Is he that neighbor seated next to you or is he right on the inside of your life? Numbers chapter 14 verse 42. Do not go up lest you be struck down by your enemies because the Lord is not a man. Is Jesus in this place? If he is, where is he as far as you are concerned? Do you still have the Spirit of God on the inside of you? Or are you moving by your own knowledge? Are you moving by your own mind? Your money, your work, your relatives, your friends are the ones that support you. Or even your physical body. The message in Zachariah is very clear, chapter 4, verse 6. Not by mind, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I want us to reevaluate our lives. What is it that we have put our trust on? What is it that we have been moving by? What is it that is helping us to find that job? Relatives or friends and heroes? Are we trusting our degree? Are we trusting our certificate? Are we trusting our speed? Are we trust? What is it that we have put our trust in for success in our lives? Not by mind, nor power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So the message is to the Christians and no longer to the church in Sardis, but the church in Makere, to the church in Wake up and save the little that is left before it is too late. Quite often we have a tendency, a very strong tendency, to compromise and conform to cultural norms, both by our tribes and by our churches. You come to church every Sunday, cultural norm you take, you listen to some music, you do every other thing and you think all is done. We even have reached a level of the church blending so closely with the state. Remember, prophets never used to live in kings' palaces. They would only come to deliver a message. But today the church has been compromised by the state. Living together and can no longer decipher if anything is wrong. Some priests have actually even become agents of the state. The cardinal just discovered the other day that your day is priests and they are spying on them. Are you an agent of the state? I'm not talking about the state of government of Uganda, I'm talking about the worldly kingdom. But you can also be an agent of the state of the Republic of Uganda. Jesus. In verse 2 of the scripture we read in Revelation says, I know you are deeds. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. A reputation of being alive, but you are dead. We want to pray. We want to look back into our own personal lives. While the completeness of Jesus is reflected in the seven spirits, our personal own completeness is reflected in the seven elements of the fruit of the Spirit. 
Galatians chapter 2, 22. The fruit of the Spirit. Love. We talk about joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Let's just run through this. Search yourself. Which one of these is the most difficult for you? Which one of these do you discover you have a deficit and not a surplus? What kind of love is within you? What kind of love? Do you have any love? Give it for your own children, your own neighbors, your own siblings. What kind of love do you have? Number two, you have joy within yourself. You see group of faces moving around, plastic smiles, even at weddings. <laughs> the bride and the groom themselves having all the plastic smiles just for the camera. But there is no joy, and it is them. Peace. You can add on security in our country today. Do we have peace? Are we patient with one another? Are we patient with ourselves? Many times we are not even patient with our own selves. Anything that makes late, you begin to compare. You begin to harass and torment yourself and the others. Where is our kindness? Where is our kindness? If somebody can literally steal the budget to lend for drugs, where is our kindness? Nobody chooses to force it. And we pay our taxes so that those who cannot afford a medical card can hardly walk into a clinic and get treatment. We even steal the salary of the health workers. Which is already miserable to speak about. Where is our goodness? Where is our faithfulness? Do you have the fruit of the Spirit? There is no way that the fruit of the Spirit without the Spirit Himself. Are you the church in service or are you the one in Philadelphia? The church in Philadelphia had a lot of people that Jesus gave credit to. The church in service had a few of those, but most of them did not know what they were doing. They were at power with Christ and they did not know about it. The Old Testament reading tells us of Moses getting to a level and finding the people who had sinned against God. Their sin was so bad and big and they were so sinful that he could not even bring them to repent. He just said, guys, I am going to repent on your behalf. At what level of your Christian walk are you? The church in service or the church in Philadelphia? Have we had a church, and I'm talking about individuals, taken a look at our spiritual position? Are you one of the few in the church in service? Or are you among the men in Philadelphia? Or are you among those men in service? We are alive and dead. It's time to reflect upon our lives. And I want to invite you to pray. Let us pray. We are going to pray for ourselves. You know yourself better. You have put up a show and you have a reputation of being alive to others and dead.
just as I am without my blood. Knowing that Jesus' blood was shed for me and he bids me to come, are you going to come? Waiting to rid my soul of one dark blood. You may just be having that one dark blood. Remember, it is his blood that cleanses each spot. It won't be done by the number of times you kneel down in the day. It will not be done by how many confessions you make you go to get the Jesus into that life. To clean and cleanse each of those that blocks. You may be tossed about with a lot of conflict and doubts within, fightings and fears within you and without you. It's time to say, O Lamb of God, I am. Just as I am, Lord, oh, oh,
dark blood and spots in their lives. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and bless you for speaking to us. Lord, we stand before you, celebrating our lives with fears, with fightings, with worries, not knowing what will come next. That we have for the world, that we can arise and save what is still left in us. So, Lord, for anyone standing and pray, that you arise and save the little that has been left in them, in their lives. For the only one knows that who can serve deep inside each one of us into our hearts. So that you pray that you bring healing, you bring total repentance, you bring deliverance to these results. As they stand with the same beside and come to you, on their own they cannot do it. But with you, everything is possible. So that I pray that you heal and make those broken hearts. Wash each one of us today. Maybe we did stand, but you know in our hearts their fears, their worries, their anxieties. Like the God must came to you, Lord, as they pray also, as they come to you, Lord, we see each one of us. Hold each one of us by your hand. Bless you and love you. Pray that prayer. 